Hi folks, Mr. Mega Man Fan here. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. Normally Tuesdays are for the PC Engine files, but I feel that recent developments with the Analog Pocket warrant skipping it this week and bringing you some information about a brand new way to update your Analog Pocket and get even more things running than it previously could before. And the one that really strikes my fancy is the Neo Geo Core. Previously, I said in a video that I tried to set it up and had no luck because I couldn't get the right files to support it and I couldn't get the right ROM sets to work with it. Well, that process has been very much streamlined thanks to the Analog Pocket Net Updater and it works on all platforms. You can use it on Windows, Macintosh, or Linux. There's a version for each. Now you're still going to need to supply your own ROMs for each console, either from backups of games you already have or other means that obviously you're left to your own devices to figure out. But what it does do is install all the cores on your micro SD card and all of the necessary support files. Like if you need a special operating system for any particular core, it will put it in the correct folder in the correct file in the correct place. It will get all of that for you by running a script that just downloads all of that to your micro SD card. And it also, as part of the net updater, it's basically designed so that it grabs the latest firmware from the analog website. So if there's been an update to the analog pocket, it will install that update via the firmware right from the moment you put your micro SD card into your analog pocket. So my recommendation would be format a brand new micro SD card from scratch, FAT32 MS-DOS format, doesn't matter whether you're formatting it on a Linux, Mac, or a PC. You want FAT32 for your file format because that's what the Analog Pocket will recognize. And then you're going to put the installer script for whatever computer you're running it on on the root folder of your micro SD card and run it. Now, some operating systems like my Mac OS will prevent you from running a script like that. It'll say... This is not an authorized Apple program, in which case you need to go into your system settings under the security and go to where it says this program was blocked from running, allow it anyway, say yes, and then it will run the script on your micro SD card. But again, once you do that, it automates everything. It gets the latest firmware, it gets the latest cores, it gets all the support files you need for the cores. And some of these cores have games that are built in, ready to go, like Asteroids, Dig Dug, Space War. Those cores are ready to play without even having to download any ROMs because the core itself is an arcade game. And a lot of them have alternate versions of those arcade games, like bootlegs, hacks, overseas versions you can try out a whole bunch of different things with each of the cores. Now, the author of this updater script is Matt Pinella. As you can see here, I will put a link to his GitHub in the description, but if that stops working at any point, just do a Google search for Matt Pinella Pocket Core Auto Update, and you should be able to find either this GitHub page or whatever new resource has uploaded it, and you will be able to get the script that will pull all the files that you need and it will be updated to whatever new cores are available. So cores that you don't even see in this video at the time of recording will still be updated by this script. This also means that if you have any cores that aren't performing as well as you would like, there may be a new version released by the author by the time you run the auto updater script. So it will get the latest version of that core, replace the one that you have on your micro SD card, and you will have a more functional core that's able to do more things. And I'm going to really showcase that in a second here because the Sega Genesis core was radically improved by updating the firmware and the core with this script. I know I said in my previous video about the Genesis core that some things weren't working because it was in a very alpha state. 
But in hindsight, I think I wasn't running the latest version of the firmware that had been released for the analog pocket because I'm not sure the core has changed that much. Maybe it's up from version 05 to 06, but whatever the difference is, I attribute it more to me having an updated firmware that better supports FPGA cores, as noted by Analog themselves in their release notes. So as promised, here's footage of me running the Genesis core again, and you will see that it is a lot smoother now. Games other than Wily Wars work. There is no graphical glitching at the top of the screen. And like I said, I would attribute this more to having the latest firmware than to having the latest core. Because the functionality of the core seems to be basically the same as it was before, except things just work better now. There are features that you might expect if you're used to Mr. or playing with RetroArch that aren't available yet. For example, games that do support memories, what they call save states on Analog Pocket, you can't do that in this core, at least not yet. I'll show you. Normally, if you can do memories, you hold the Analog button and press up, but I get an error that says, Save Not Supported. That doesn't mean that it won't be added in a later version of this core, but it means that right now you can't do it. In fact, the only cores that I know of that support memories, AKA save states, are the ones that would be supported by the cartridge port on the back. So for example, if you were using the Game Gear adapter, you would be able to do memories with that. You can do memories in the Game Gear core as well. So Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, and the ones that work on the Game Gear platform, like SG-1000, Sega Master System, you will be able to do save states with those. I haven't been able to do them with NES, SNES, or Genesis. Those cores don't support save states, at least not right now. They could be updated. If you're using the auto-updater script after I made this video, and you find that save states, memories, whatever you want to call them, are working, then wonderful. I'm happy for you. I hope they just keep it mapped to the same key press combination because analog and up is easy to remember. Although looking at the release notes, I saw that they said for at least one of the cores, if you were using an 8-bit do controller, it would also recognize select and up to access memories. So I guess they mapped it to that in the latest version of the firmware. Anyway, Rocket Knight Adventures works now, which is one of my all-time favorite Sega Genesis games. I've raved about it before. Unfortunately, many of us raving about it on YouTube seems to have affected the value of the game accordingly. So, you might want to try it in emulation. And I'm not saying don't never buy a physical copy of it, but at least with this core you have the option to try before you buy and you are playing the games in a faithful way in a core that emulates all of the internal circuitry of a sega genesis all of these cores are designed to mimic the actual architecture of the systems that they are running like for example this green beret core supports multiple different arcade games because those same arcade games used the same chipset. They just ran different code on that chipset. So you could play Mr. Goemon, Green Beret, or Russian Attack, which some people probably know better from the NES version, which sold quite well. But it's just as fun, maybe even a little more so, to play the arcade version. I'm Mr. Mega Man fan. Thanks for watching.